Hello, and welcome to Seltzertronics. I've thought uh, a little bit about in-ear uh, monitors these days. I like this particular pair, the Shure SE215. I got these so I could go to the gym, run around, uh, do things, and listen to my music. And, you know, in some kind of isolation, right? You're at the gym, it's very noisy. And if you don't have good isolation, you're going to end up cranking the volume really loud and not really even know it because, you know, you're just compensating for all of the, the ambient noise, right? But in fact, you may actually be listening to music at such high levels that it could be damaging your hearing. So I went with something, uh, you know, I wanted the convenience of an IEM and the freedom of movement of an IEM but also something that was going to give me good isolation. This Shure SE215 is a pretty good reputation for that, especially with foam tips. But even with good isolation, IEMs, just by their nature, the fact that the driver sits you know, way inside your ear can create really high pressure levels. So, you know, what is safe uh, for these things to, what, what is a safe listening volume for these to, uh, you know, for, to listen at? Well, I, that's what I want to find out here. So I'm right now I'm playing some music here. This is uh, some uh, trap music streaming from di.fm. And I'm going to put this in my finger like this to kind of create a little bit of an ear canal. Okay. Here's a SPL meter that I got from Amazon for about 20 bucks. You should get one of these if you're concerned about uh, noise induced hearing loss but I'm just gonna stick this in here as if it were my eardrum can you see that we're into the 80s and generally about 80 decibels is uh, as considered to be a safe listening level for an extended period of time. We're at about 82, 83 here. Now, how, what is the volume at on my phone here? It was at 25 out of 75. This is an LG V20 and it is my, the quad DAC is activated. Uh, I don't think it's using the entire quad DAC uh, with just these low power IEMs. Uh, but it's, so it's a little bit more powerful than a standard cell phone output but I'm only at 25 of 75, and generally, I would like, I, when I'm working out, I would like to listen louder than that. Right, where I would like to listen is at probably about 40. If I'm really working out hard and really into it, now where are we at? We're into about 90 decibels, 93 decibels or a spike there. So in, at that lo level, you probably shouldn't be listening for more than 30 minutes or so. Right? And that's really not an extreme volume here. At an extreme volume here, let's just go to 55. In fact, my phone even issues a little warning there. Ninety-four. These are pretty high levels, right? Now, does the isolation compensate for that? The reason why you have good isolation is that you don't have to turn it up so loud. Does that protect you? Well, to some degree, yes. If I listen at level 25 of 75, I'm kind of at the borderline of a safe range and I could run around the track for an hour and I feel pretty good. My ears don't hurt, no fatigue, All right? Uh, but, you know, really, how good is the isolation in uh, something like this? So here I have my dummy head here, which is also a binaural microphone. Right? And I am going to put some pink noise on. Okay, so now we have some pink noise playing on my speaker system. It's sitting at about 57, 58 decibels. I'm going to try to put these in here. How's that sound?
So that's with IEMs. Now let's try with this pair of Audio Technica and 40 x Alright, now let's try it with this pair of Zeke, uh, Parrot Zeke 1.0 noise cancelling headphones. Noise cancellation is active. I'm not sure if this is really working. So, in conclusion, IEMs are very convenient, but you do have to be wary of the sound pressure levels. Even at relatively moderate volumes, they can still be creating quite a bit of pressure.